Well, I'm the third generation on the ranch. Penny and I got married in 1982, and um, we had three kids, Linda Brock and Bo, and Linda lives in Kadoka and works at the bank and ranches. Oldest boy Brock is carpentering in Phillip, and Bo is here on the ranch full time with us. We're kind of almost on the divide. 10 or 15 percent of the north side of the ranch actually runs to the Cheyenne River and the rest of the land flows into the Bad River. I started rotational grazing probably like in 2000, 2001. We never rotated before that, but dad was always make sure that you never were overstocked or overgrazed, so the land was in good shape. Today we've got like 67 pastures we rotate through. We move cows every so often and we watch the length of the grass. It only get, eats down so far and then he will move them. And I think the unique thing is if we're using three pastures at a time, the other 64 are, are getting rest. A lot of people talk about how long they graze the land, but I think it's really important in how long you rest it. Most of the time, about 94 or 95% of the land is resting here. It really helps in the dry years when you're doing things like that and leaving grass and catching snow and you get a dry year and you can um, withstand a drought a whole lot easier than if you're not doing those things. We're doing multiple things and, and um, I can't say which one's paying off the most. We've got almost 30 miles of pipeline and 120 tire tanks strung out so we've Got our water really well watered with really good water. And then we're um, putting out the supplement away from the tank so that helps distribute it. Supplement's just like a multivitamin for humans. We test the grass a few times a year, three, four, five times a year, depending on the year. We get the supplement made up for what the grass does not have. When you rotational graze, that just helps because they go into a new pasture and it's all fresh and they spread out and then they kind of go through it and then a week later you do it all over again and, and it's just kind of like every week they get a Thanksgiving meal or something and, and they just do better and, and then we leave more grass so we're getting more ground cover. So if we have more ground cover we're not losing moisture to evaporation and we get more, more rain to soak in then and don't run off. And So it's just a combination of deals that um, when you do them, they all kind of snowball off on one another and it, it really helps. If you take care of the, the land, the land takes care of the cattle and it makes it easier for you. Cattle stay healthier, cows stay healthier. It's good for the wildlife too. So that's how we make a lot of our decisions. Last year we bought another ranch down by uh, Kadoka on the White River and it's a little learning experience there. They have some badlands and some prairie. And it's kind of intertwined with deeded land and government land and the government land is very understocked so you can be assured that you're always going to have pretty good grass even on a, on a poor year. You know it has its drawbacks but it also has advantages like everything else. We build a house there for our daughter and her kids, and um, they're running it along with a few others. And uh, so we um, go down there when we can. We kind of share the work, and uh, if they need help, we'll go down there and help them. There's been a little learning experience. I know we hop on four wheelers and take off everywhere we want to go around here and down there. You got to be a little more careful with the Badlands. Of all the things we're doing here, I think 90% of them, uh, an idea came from uh, either being on the Grasslands Coalition board or going to a tour or an event that they sponsored. So that's a really, really cool group. And when they have the Leopold Award and ESAP winners and tours like that, or, you know, they have a speaker like Gabe Brown in, um, I try to get to everyone that I can. And um, the other thing I do is try to encourage other people to go to them. Um, you know, it's so cheap to join the membership and the mailing list and the things you learn and the connections you make, um, it's money well spent. So I really appreciate um, what those people are doing for the grasslands. Ranches need to stay in the family. I think it's a shame if it doesn't work out that way. 
it's a lot of work to keep and manage a place like this and then not have it carried down to the next generations. And I think that's the goal of every single rancher is to have sons or daughters or someone that will come and keep it the way you're used to and even make it better for generations to come. I think if um, dad was here today, he'd be pretty happy, I hope. I think we've added on to the place and filled it in and, and I think um, he'd be proud.